here's going to be some from questions from my friends on Google Plus. I got seven questions here, so I'll probably do this in, in two separate videos. Um, great questions also, so let me get right into it. So Mr. Me1229 asks me, say you're doing an exercise, for example, push-ups. How much intensity should the exercise have? Say if a person could do only, say, five push-ups, would it be more detrimental for them as the intensity is too high? Or would it be okay to try to knock out as many as they can through the days or do something less? For example, wall push-ups. Hope this time isn't confusing. Not confusing at, uh, at all. I don't think, if I'm understanding your, your question correctly, which I think, I, think I, uh, I am, you're saying, you know, if you're doing something like push-ups and you can only do five push-ups, is it better to do, you know, something easier like knee push-ups or wall push-ups um, where you can do higher reps? Well, no, I don't think so. In, in my opinion, if, for example, you're, you're doing five push-ups, um, do as many as you can at, at, at your body weight. Do those five push-ups, do sets of five, sets of five, sets of five, eventually we will do sets of six, sets of eight, sets of ten, sets of twelve, next thing you're going to be pumping out twenty in a row. And, and that's how I think you should proceed in that. You, you know, doing only five is five push-ups, for example, or five of any exercise, uh, especially if you talk calisthenics, it's going to be very stressful on your body. But when you're doing only that much weight, your body's going to respond by getting getting stronger. You're going to get stronger, you know, just like um, if you're doing five rep sets of squats. Your body responds to the weight that you're doing, and it's going to get stronger. So my advice, Mr. Me, is do, do your sets of five, and just slowly over time, do as much as you can for as many sets as you're going to do, and you're going to get stronger and you're able to do more reps and more reps and more reps and it'll get easier for you. Just stay consistent. That's really the key, is to stay consistent in doing your workouts. Don't skip workouts. If you plan on doing it three or four times a week, do it three or four times a week. Don't do a week on, a week off, a week on, a week off, because then you just end up staying in the same place. So, great question. Great question. SJ Runner asks me, what information can you share about being in your mid age, years of working out. Any advice? I can say it's been harder to recover as I've gotten older and now experience more wear and tear. Thanks. Okay, SJ, the first thing I would recommend, especially if you're, um, if you're middle-aged and working out, first thing, congratulations. Most middle-aged men out there are not working out. Frankly, they're sitting on their asses and it's, it's a travesty. You know, your body you should always be exercising your body. That's how you stay young. That's how you stay fit. That's how you stay healthy. And that's how you have a, a, a high quality of life, you know, into, even into your later years. So you always want to stay active. You always want to stay working out. You always want to stay strong. Exercise is a great way to do it. So, now if you are older and you're training, the first thing I recommend is perhaps take it slow. Don't do so much volume. You know, because you're not going to be able, you're not going to have the recovery abilities of, of when you were 20 years old. You know, so do less volume, less overall workload. This way, you're not going to be as sore. Your joints may not be as, you know, be as sore afterwards. And you're going to put yourself at a lower risk of injury. And that leads me into my second point: is when you're older and you're working out, make sure your form is always tight. Make sure you're not doing too much weight. Uh, I'm not saying not to lift heavy, what I'm saying is make sure your form is right and you're working at a rate of weight that you can uh, do an exercise with the proper form. You know, at, at that point in the game, if you're say 50 years old, 55 years old, uh, it, it's not about, hey, I want to have this sexy beach body. You know, it's about, yeah, you want to look great on the beach and you want to look great for your age. Don't get me wrong. but. You, you gotta, you're thinking about functional strength, staying strong, staying healthy, and um, you don't have to go balls to the walls and try to set some massive PR, you know, you know, personal record in the gym. Those days are probably long gone, long gone. So be safe, go slow, and don't overdo it. And always keep your form on point. That is, um, at any age, but even especially, especially it's important when you're older. So, uh, those are my thoughts, SJ, and um, 
I hope you find that helpful. Great question. Great question. Dirty dog. What to do if your training seems to be stuck and you are no longer making progress? Yeah, this happens all the time, all the time, um, especially when you're an uh, intermediate to advanced lifter. You know, you start lifting, and um, you know, if you're, if you're a beginner, and you can you can put five, ten pounds on the bar every time you go into the gym, and it feels great. But once after a while, yeah, um, you when you've been lifting for a while and your weights really get up there, and you know, um, it starts to get tougher to, to progress. And you know, there's different. There's um, two different progression schemes. Typically, there's linear progression where you're just literally ramping up the weight, and then there's linear periodization, which is a little bit more complicated. It goes with different reps and, and set schemes uh, over time in, in order to increase your weight and make progress. And um, most, you know, when you get into advanced advanced lifters who've been lifting a long time, they, they stick to linear periodization. Uh, most lifters, if you're intermediate or even a lot of advanced lifters still stick to linear, uh, just linear progression where, you know, you're, you're benching 200 and you're going to 205, 210, uh, 225. I, I know I jumped a whole, a whole lot of weight there, but, you know, you just progress in weight. Just, you know, almost like a straight line up. So what happens if, if, you, if you're progressing in that manner, you're doing, you know, linear progression, and you get stuck, let's say you're at 250 on your bench, and you're doing sets of five, and you're just, you're stuck. You're going there one week, doing 250, set to five, next week, 250, set to five, and next week, 250, set to five, and you just can't make any progress. What I typically recommend to do, pull back the weight about 10%. So in this case, you go from about 250 to 225, and start over from there. Allow your body to, you know, to again, you're gonna pull back and you allow your body to strengthen and adapt. What's happened is it's hit a point where it's not strengthening anymore, and you're, and you're effective. You're working out isn't getting effective. Now, if you get back up to 250, hopefully, you know you've gained strength going from 225 back up to 250. Your body has been able to adapt. You've given it a little bit of a break, and it's been able to adapt, um, and you've been able to bust through that 250 plateau and keep going. If not, it might be a, a great time to, you know, take a look at your routine and, and change it up. You know, I don't advocate constantly changing routine. Muscle confusion is nonsense. You know, people change up their workouts every every other workout, every two weeks, every three weeks. That's nonsense. You know, you should be squatting every week. You should be deadlifting every week. You know, no reason to change it up. Um, but you might want to perhaps go to a different rep range. You might want to go from flat bench to incline bench. Make make a change like that, and that way you start to progress on the incline bench, or you start to progress in uh, in the different rep range. You know, those are just some ideas of, of, of what you can do. So, you know, 10% pullback, uh, change your rep range, or just change your exercise in general, like for example, from a flat bench to an incline bench. Uh, those are all things that I've done that I have found effective uh, in the past. So, hopefully, uh, you, you know, you can find those effective too, and that, that'll help you out. One more question for this one. Let's see here. What advice do you have for people who work long hours and still want to make gains? Are finding a hard to train, still get enough rest, and with the long hours? What would be a good routine for this type of situation? And this is from Charles Pereira. Hopefully I'm saying your name right, Charles. Uh, great question. A lot of people have that problem. They work long hours, they work 60 hour weeks, or they'll work three days on, you know, three days off or something like that. In that kind of a case, what I recommend is full body routines. You know, that way you're not you're not locked into a lot of times people say, oh, Monday's chest, t Tuesday's uh, back, you know, this body part split where you're trying to get if you're like five different routines in a week. In, in, in a situation like Charles has, you, you probably can't do that. You can't get to the gym five times. So the best, the most effective way when you, have, when, have a, uh, when you have to work a lot of hours and you can't dedicate a lot of time to the gym, full body routines. Get in there and do your squats, your deadlifts. Uh, your bench press, your your barbell rows, and just do the major compound exercises, and do those, you know, if you get into the gym three times a week, two times a week, you know, as many times as you can, um, and do your full body routine. That way, you're working all the muscles of your body. And if you're able to get in there three times a week, maybe you have a little extra time while you're in the gym, an extra 15, 20 minutes, you know, then that's where you're working some 
you know, extra abs, work in some extra maybe arms if your arms are a lagging body part. You can do some extra biceps or triceps work, or maybe an extra shoulder work, a little extra shoulder work or, or rear delt work, you know, you can do some face pulls or something like that. And work that in there in an alternating schedule when you are able to get in there. But yeah, full body routine will allow you to hit the most muscles as as often as as you're possible with your work schedule. Um, I, I definitely would not suggest a body part split. And the only other routine I might even think might work, depending on how many days you can get in there, would be something like an upper lower split. That might work too. You know, upper body one day, if you can't get in for two more days, lower body, then you can't get in for another day, upper body, something like that. But um, full body is probably going to be the best routine for somebody who has very limited time to get into the gym. So guys, thank you very, very much for those questions. I hope you found the answers helpful. I'm going to address the rest of my questions I have here in uh, part three of this series, video uh, Q&A series. And uh, thanks again, guys. If you uh, find everything helpful, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do click like. And I'll talk to you again real soon. A couple more questions coming up.